Hi, welcome to EM and Phi. This week we're going to talk about the color coding system recommended by the American Academy of Ophthalmologists to help classify the majority of ophthalmic medications that are in use. This system was initially developed in the 1980s as a way to help providers and patients differentiate between ophthalmic medications, especially if they're taking multiple components. I have seen this alluded to and tested on in some of the various practice questions that are out there for emergency medicine boards and in-service exams. So this very well could be fair game. So there are 10 different colors that are out there, and you'll see these on the labels and caps. But again, each of them correspond to a particular class or function of the medicine. So we'll talk about that, as well as a few ways to try and remember some of those associations. First class we'll talk about are the beta blockers. True beta blockers, like Timolol, those will have yellow caps. And the way I think about this is in thinking about the sun, often portrayed as bright and yellow, and you need some block if you're going to be out in it. Thus, beta blockers should equivocate with yellow. This gets a little trickier with your beta blocker combinations, where ophthalmic beta blockers such as Timolol may get combined with a carbonic anhydrase inhibitor such as dorzalamide. And in these situations, the color will often be a dark blue. I remember this by thinking about the beta blocker blue combo, or triple B combo. Sounds kind of like a huge meal you might order at your favorite diner or hamburger shop. You can also think of the extra B and triple B as representing the additional component added to the beta blocker in combination. Speaking of carbonic anhydrase inhibitors, those are orange. And this may be a stretch, but when I look at the word carbonic anhydrase inhibitor, I see the first two initials, CA, as being the same letters that might serve as initials for citric acid. And I most commonly associate citric acid with oranges. So there you go. That's going to represent your dorsalamide, your brinzolamide, your carbonic anhydrase inhibitors. Alpha-2 adrenergic agonists, such as aproclonidine, bromonidine, those drops are purple. And when I think about that class of medications, I look at the very end of each word and see that a lot of them share the I-D-I-N-E-S, idines, which reminds me of iodine. And iodine, if you remember from science class, in solid and vapor form is this bright, beautiful purple. Pink represents steroids and other anti-inflammatories, not NSAIDs. I remember this by picturing that most inflammation is some shade of pink. Alternatively, you can remember this by thinking about some of the unwanted side effects that male users of anabolic steroids begin to exhibit, namely some of the feminine physical characteristics, and femininity historically is tied to the color pink. Your non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medication are gray, so your NSAIDs are gray, so remember that they share that long A sound, Prostaglandin analogs such as latanoprost or bimetoprost are turquoise. When I think about turquoise, I think about a bright blue sky or a light blue-green Caribbean ocean. And if I'm out enjoying these things, I'm going to want to bring out my GoPro camera. And if I'm a little more lazy, then I'll have a professional drive the boat or the plane or hang glider. So if you see turquoise, think pro prostaglandin analog. All antifungals, antivirals, antibiotics that come in eye drop form, those all should have tan caps or labels. But I imagine each of these medications as being on the front lines of infection. And in order to do that, they need to look the part. And there's no better example than the army, where tan and camouflage are fairly standard colors. So again, just think of these as infection fighters in uniform. Myotics are generally green. We like these because they help facilitate aqueous outflow and acute angle closure glaucoma with meds such as pilocarpine. But myotics keep the pupil small. And when you think of a small pupil, you think about the homonym of pupil and picture a young student. They're going to be very green in their training. So if you can equivocate a young, small, green pupil with your small pupil inducers or your myotics, then you should be good. Our last class is that of our midriatics and our cycloplegics, those medications that try and dilate the eye as well as relax the ciliary muscle. And these include medications such as tropicamide, phenylephrine, cyclopenylate. These all should be associated with the color red. So when you think red, think restriction of the ciliary muscle and rolling back of the iris. The color red should also induce caution because all of these medications in this group are contraindicated in acute angle closure glaucoma. That covers all 10 colors used by the AAO classification system. But you may notice, especially if you're an emergency room physician, that one medication in particular is missing from this, and that's propericane or some of your other topical ophthalmic anesthetics that we often use to facilitate better exam. Now, when I've looked at the medication, it's usually in a white or green container. But as far as I know, this med does not have a classification in this system. 
You should know that this system is not adopted by all manufacturers or all countries. So while the color of the cap should make you think about the class of medication, it should not replace your clinical judgment. Get familiar with the active ingredient and ask a pharmacist if you need help. This should wrap up this week's Amen 5. I hope this helped a little bit in being able to remember some of these. If you have a system that works for you, I'd love to see it, so shoot me a message. Thanks for watching.